You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZWLP Conroe and 106.1 KZCC LP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Hello, everyone. I am Margie Taylor, your host for Conroe Culture News at Lone Star Community Radio, still in downtown Conroe, but now located at the Conroe Tower. And as we get ready towards Memorial Day weekend, there's several events that we're going to be talking about today. And one of those is with my guest, Katie Krause. She's executive director of Bears, etc. And sitting also across from me is Van Bracken. He's the owner um, distillery person from Bartlett's Distillery. And then we're going to have a little bit later in the hour, Monique Crawford. She's the Vice President of Public Relations of France Bolts with lots of Z's, a brewing company. And we're going to hear from her. This is sponsored by Roger Stein Chiropractic and Team Sinisi Real Estate Group. Roger Stein Chiropractic is located at 3033 West Davis by Conroe High School in Taco Bell. And uh, if you are a new patient, $25 goes back to CASA. Um, and that's pretty much all the time. And she's very generous and really cares about the kids and the youth. So she has a focus on natural, holistic approach to not only relieve pain, but also achieve optimal health. Dr. Stacy Rogers holds certifications in adjusting extremities, clinical nutrition, and prenatal and pe- pediatric care. Team Sinisi Real Estate Group serves the greater Montgomery County and it's the best source for buying, selling, or investing in real estate. And you know about the real estate market right now. It's just all over the place. Uh, People are getting uh, offers for over what they're listing. It's crazy. So it's a good time to buy, sell. And if you want to contact them, Vinny Sinisi is at 281-507-9777. Team Sinisi. So I, I want to mention before we talk about bears, etc., that this Memorial Weekend there's a, a big event happening at the Montgomery County Veterans Memorial Park, and that's located at I-45 and Highway 105. And it's Sunday, May 30th is the Kids Cast and Catch, and what that is is a free fishing tournament for kids ages three to nine, and it starts at 9:30. And they're requesting that you sign up on. Um, a website which will also be listed on this page for Conroe Culture News but if you do that in advance they know to have enough supplies and enough bait it's absolutely free and there will be hot dogs and drinks served at noon with family activity including a bounce house face painting inflatable inflatable archery range and a giant's yard games there's going to be motorcycles and jeeps will be circling the area at uh, 1 p.m and a patriotic concert at 1 30. so also on monday the 31st Memorial Day, there's a Memorial Day observance and dedication beginning at 11 a.m. honoring all the veterans past and present. And they will be dedicating the line, Victory Row, Montgomery County Veterans Memorial Monument, and Remembered Whispers. And uh, it's going to be a very moving observance. Uh, it's absolutely free, and they have lots of things to see. And, of course, there will be some elected officials, veterans, and they are still taking names to put in their line and uh, this is people they don't have to live in montgomery county any veteran uh, serving now or serving in the past any area of service they're all included there is a fee but if you can't pay the fee they have scholarships and so they're always taking donations to help with that because they want everybody to be included So you can find out more about that on their Facebook page, Montgomery County Veterans Memorial Park, or you can go to um, Montgomery, mcvetmemorialpark.org. So very moving. Uh, So now we're going to talk a little bit about Bears, etc. (laughs) Woohoo! Get excited! I know, I know. So, okay, so we have Katie here, who's Miss Bears, etc., and she lives this all stash. the time. Yeah, you do, you do, like a pageant or something. Here she is. <laughs> so, uh, you may have seen her or um, one of her bears popping around the area. Have they been into your place? Yes, they have. Yes, they have. Okay. Does the bear drink much? Not on Tuesdays. <laughs> Well, okay, okay. 
takes up a lot of space, though, right? <laughs> so uh, let, let's talk about the mission. What What is okay. Bears, etc.? cetera? Um, well, uh, we are an organization that's leaving the world better than we found it by connecting people with nature, rescuing animals, specifically bears, from the exotic pet trade, and giving people and animals a piece of the wild, the P-E-A-C-E, that comes with going out into the wild, into the national forest, into the parks, into the, when you discard your phones and it's quiet and peaceful, a lot of these animals have come from abuse and neglect. And so we give them a quiet place to rehabilitate themselves and live out the rest of their lives. Okay. So when you're not catching bears, um, what are you doing? Because I know that you rescue all walks of life. Well, not people, but species. I mean, that's part of our, our eventual phase two or three figuring it out uh, is to have on-site housing for veterans um, to help with their rehabilitation too if they've been down on their luck and stuff like that but um, right now because we're just a baby nonprofit, I do have full-time work I groom dogs I train dogs and I also pet sit so um, I have basically four jobs uh, that I work and I was waitressing last year too <laughs> so I was working five but jobs, you also but... do other things I mean you yes. get calls what organizations are you part of or that um, they know your okay. phone number to call you yes. um, <laughs> so a lot of people know me I used to be a wildlife rehabber uh, I didn't transfer my license down here because I knew my focus was out of the exotic pet trade um, and so they call me to help with maybe an injured bird or mammal or relocate a snake um, also, I'm a member of three different chambers of commerce, and I sit in a different seat for each of those locations. So with the Conroe Chamber, I sit on the Diplomat Committee. At the Montgomery Chamber, I'm on the Board of Directors. And with the Woodlands Chambers, I'm on the Community Relations Team. So um, I like to give back to the community. Um, we also help foster dogs with bottle baby puppies being my expertise, the neonates. Um, and so, but we're kind of phasing out of that a little bit as we have taken on, we are at capacity where we're at right now for animals, for bears, etc. So, um, you and Ambrose. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we do still have a few foster dogs in house, um, that we're working with. Um, but eventually we'll have to phase that out as we build bears, et cetera, up and then come back to it once we're stable with bears, et cetera, because that's a passion of mine as well. Well, you are also considered a very credible, reliable person for any kind of, uh, calls. Yes. Besides the normal dog calls. And, you know, if I call you about something going on with my dog, my Willie or others, I'm sure do the same, but you are on the link with other things going on in the greater Houston area, aren't you? Don't others, uh, fosters and, and birds and things like that give you a call? Yeah, so we work with lots of different organizations. We're on the Big Cat Sanctuary Alliance um, team where we are accredited sanctuaries that are helping to end the tiger trade in America is the basis of that. So, um, And let's get back to that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we'll okay. be talking about that shortly. Um, but yeah, so we work with lots of veterinarians. We work with lots of, um, we have several veterinarians that call us when there's been an animal abandoned at there um several birds clear down in houston there's one just southeast of houston that they call us when they get an exotic pet that needs to be owner surrendered kind of so cool we're on a lot of lists <laughs> that's what i mean yeah. I mean, people don't realize that uh you're not just in your own little world here in yeah. montgomery county yeah you're, you're I mean, also sit on um what is the other alliance that you're part oh, of? oh yeah and the texas black bear alliance so texas we are helping black track okay. the black bears as they move back into texas i'm vice chair of that so and you help transport bears before too yes we you? have helped transport five black bears we were actually the contact for that and helped find placement for those five bears and then help take them on their way to their uh, final so that's what gives you the credibility of who you are and what you do so okay yeah. now let's get back to the tiger <laughs> event so uh tigers suddenly appear periodically <laughs> whether <laughs> whether in montgomery county that's or in houston true. Tell me about that. Why is that happening? Um, so the exotic pet trade is a $15 billion a year industry. The illegal or black market part of that is also a 
you know, several billion dollar a year industry, it's second only to illegal drugs. It has surpassed guns over the past five years. Wow. So tigers, specifically full grown, are worth more in pieces than they are alive on the black market. Same with bears. Um, so you can buy a bear cub for 300 to 500 dollars and ha- have it as a pet. Really, no questions asked in many states across the United States. In Texas, it's a fifty dollar large dangerous carnivore permit. Same with tigers. Now there are a counties, fifty dollar permit. Wow. Yes, there are, Maybe and you because need a bear. they're not a na- well tigers because they're not a native species, you don't have to have a Texan park, Texas Parks and Wildlife permit. However, for a black bear that is a native species, if they can show proof that they bought it out of state as a pet through because there are breeders of these animals. Um, you don't have to have a Texas Parks and Wildlife permit for that black bear because you can show that you bought it from a breeder and brought it into the state. So, yeah. That's crazy. Um, Tigers, specifically the orange tigers, um, and we call them all mutt tigers that are a part of this exotic pet trade because there's no conservation value in any of these tigers because they're bred to different species. So there's five subspecies of tigers currently alive. There are three that um, have been extinct in the wild. So there's only 3,500 tigers left in the wild. There are more in private owner hands in the United States than there are left in the wild. Um, So you can, a thousand dollars, couple thousand dollars for an orange tiger, or upwards of 10 and $20,000 for a white tiger. Now let's talk about the white tigers, why they're so expensive, is because that's a recessive trait So they're breeding, they've Mm -hmm. bred down from the same male that was taken from the wild in the 1950s, brothers to mothers, daughters to fathers, to get that recessive trait to come out um, in order to have these white tigers. And they're not a subspecies and they're not albino. They actually have other congenital deformities along with that white genetic trait. So just because you see one white tiger that may look perfect, there are others that were born in that litter that didn't make it. They're born with cleft palates. They're born with crossed eyes. They're born with major malformities, seizures. They don't live as long. Um, Tigers in captivity can live into their early 20s. The white tigers are only living 8 to 10 years in some instances. So um, it's really not good to be breeding these in the So they're basically interbreeding them. Right. And coming up with something else. Right. So they're messing with science <laughs> and yeah. genetics yeah. and so all they're, of that. So when we talk about these and the difference between what zoos are doing breeding them and what the private owners are doing breeding them, zoos are actually keeping their bloodlines pure. So they're bringing, breeding Bengal tigers. So zoos are tigers. good? Yes. Okay. Uh, so AZA zoos, they're breeding Bengal tigers to Bengal tigers, making sure they have um, a so keeper the of the is, book. is kept yeah, the same. It's kept pure, so sisters okay. and brothers and dads and moms aren't interbreeding. Um, there's some, there's a species survival program, make sure that that doesn't happen. Whereas private owners are just breeding them for cub petting and stuff like that, and they don't, you know, really care about genetics. So what can we do? Not go to -to (laughs) pay-to-plays. Not give your money to those roadside attractions. Um, Because once that money stops flowing through the door for those types of activities, um, then they'll have to shut down. Um, We can also contact your senator and congressman right now. The Big Cat Public Safety Act, it's a federal act that will ban the breeding of large, dangerous cats, (laughs) carnivorous cats, um, Bears are not on that list, but you can contact. So if you're here, Congressman Brady, he voted no last fall to this. And this is a huge bill um, that can protect our first responders because when these cats get loose or these bears get loose, um, they have the to first, get them. The, yeah, who's called out? The first responders, your right. police officers, you know, and stuff like that. And they're not trained. There are, there are no classes for police officers to take to know how to handle these situations. I applaud that off-duty police officer for not shooting that tiger because that was probably pretty scary because they have no training whatsoever um, to know how to handle these situations. And they don't deserve to. They, you know, our firefighters run into burning buildings. You know, they, they go into so many dangerous situations all the time. We can prevent them from having the tigers to deal with and the bears tiger. aren't one of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, a SWAT team went into a, 
a, did a raid on a place in Oklahoma. So one of my friends were, teaches at Teeks. He's contracted to teach there. Once they find out he's worked with exotics, they start telling him stories. And so this guy came up. He's on the SWAT team. And he goes in to raid this drug dealer. And he throws his cougar on top of himself to, so he couldn't be arrested. You know, they don't deserve this. I'm really passionate. I have, you know, first responders in my family. They, they don't deserve Me this. Me too. <laughs> you know, yes, you have a firefighter <laughs> in your family. Um, they don't deserve to walk into households like this. Um, uh, if it's a fire, a firefighter doesn't deserve to walk in on a stressed out, scared tiger. Um, the tiger cub in uh, Conroe uh, five years ago, walking down Lee Glynn and Lawnmire, was tied out on a... Um, pole in the backyard while they evacuated for tax day floods um, and was found at the corner by, you know, public people. So this happens, and that's what <laughs> this people don't realize. So to that point, you have started the nonprofit Bears Etc. Mm -hmm. to have a safe place yes. for the animals. It's sustainable. And uh, people can learn educational things, and you'll yes. be working with the schools and things like that. But you got to have the place first, right? Right, right. Yeah. Um, you know, and we talk about the, you know, the realtors, you know, the sponsor of your program and stuff. Um, the fastest growing county in the nation. The price of land continues to go up. When we moved here seven years ago, land was seventeen thousand dollars an acre. It's now forty to forty-five thousand dollars an acre. So, as a nonprofit who has been fundraising for three years to get land, um, people see our fundraising needing to go up every year and they question that are they being greedy are they being you know they're like oh well their business plan is loose and blah 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 well it has to keep going up for us to keep in with the uh prices of land that are going up in montgomery county so if we want to be here we have to increase our right fundraising and plan. you are having a fundraiser yes the bear crawl and that's why van is here too yes, van is participating so that is Saturday and Sunday, yes. May 29th and 30th, which is this coming Memorial Weekend. Yes. So that doesn't interfere with anything else that's going on. And it's from noon to 6 p.m. So since Van is sitting here, tell me about what they will find when they go to your place. Well, similar to the wine festival last year, uh, when people come in, we'll get them, you know, they're, they're bringing their glasses, their, uh, their bear crawl glasses. Glasses, oh, let's see. Show there. there it is, there it is, okay. <laughs> and A you bear get, glass. And and you where get, do they, wait, let's go backwards. Where do they get the bear glass? So each location will hold a booth that is... Uh, has volunteers sitting there for bears, etc. You go to that booth and you check in. You get two tasting tickets, your wristband, and your glass. From there, you go in, you do your tastings, and then you move on to the next location. <laughs> Yes. Um, with your glass and your wristband. And you check in at each location to get your tasting tickets. Um, but your first stop is where you get your glass and stuff. But you don't so. have to go any particular order. No. Okay. I do recommend that because Bartlett's is only open on Saturday of the tour, that you hit the Conroe side first and then the Montgomery side on Sunday because Whitley Vineyards is only open on Sunday. And you have only one distillery. Only yes. one distillery. But then you have uh, the vineyards and the breweries. And the meadery. And, well, that's kind of in the winery. Okay. It's, nice. it's a wine. <laughs> you know, mead wine is still wine. It's still wine. It's still wine. Okay. So, you're unique. Yes, I am. The so, only one on our tour. The only one. But the only one in Montgomery County, yes, too. The only distillery in Montgomery County. Where's the next distillery? Uh, probably the next closest one is Whitmire's down on, off of, uh, 1960 Jones Road area. That's the next closest what one. What made you there. start a distillery? Well, um, I was working offshore back in the, around 2014, 2015, and, um, I was hanging out with the, all these good old boys from Louisiana, and they're talking about having stills in the backyard making moonshine. And I'd go back to my room, and I'd watch moonshiners on TV, and I was like, hang on a second here. I'm a licensed mechanical engineer, not a cook, well, work on cars, brew beer, I'm kind of handy. And if these guys can do this, I know I can figure it out. So I started learning about distilled spirits. And then when the price of oil crashed in 2015 and they shut the brig down and let everybody off, so okay, now what? So my wife and I sat down and had a discussion about what can we do with this? Can we turn this into a business? And craft spirits have taken off now like craft beer mm -hmm. did 20 years oh, yeah. ago. Um, there were no distilleries in Montgomery County at the time. 
And I know I could figure I could make it, so we just decided to jump off and do it. And so um, we got a business license in 2016 and finally got opened up in, in July of 2018. So we've been op- open now almost three years. How's business? Is it business increasing? Business is growing. Last year with the COVID was a roller coaster um, between the shutdown and then doing hand sanitizer for a couple weeks and then shut down again and open back up and shut down and back to a restaurant. And it's just been a roller coaster <laughs> since, but things have really taken off now as, as things get opened back up. Um, you know, COVID cases are way down, the masks have come off, people are really out, and it's warming up, and people are ready to get out and, and have a good time, and that's what we're here for. So, tell me about what you serve, what you have. Well, we make six different spirits. We have an unaged white dog whiskey, a single malt whiskey, and a gold, a silver rum, gold rum, dark rum, and spiced rum. So, there's a very broad range of spirits that we make for all flavor palettes. Uh, we make a number of different wonderful rum drinks, a number of wonderful different uh, whiskey drinks. Mm-hmm. And we we'll always tell people, if, you know, you come in and we make you something you don't like, don't worry about it. I'll drink it and then I'll make you something else. <laughs> well, and you do a really good job because I'm not one to normally have a rum or a whiskey drink, but it just tastes very, very smooth. I mean, it's very nice. It's very flavorful. I know that I have been there a more than times. once. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was talking with Dave over at Southern Star the other day. He actually came in and visited for us for a while. And um, and all the, the craft beverage products that we have in Conroe, he says, nobody's making crap. Everybody here is making really good, high-quality you know, wines, beers, and spirits. Right. And we, we pride ourselves on that. And if somebody comes into Conroe and starts making a bunch of garbage, we're going to run them out of town <laughs> because we have we have a reputation here. Sure. Things, this is about quality and about you know raising the level of – you know, we want this. We want this community to be a place where, you know, we want people to come and visit and spend time and spend their money. And you know, we're not in, comp- in competition with each other. We're really, really in competition with people down in Houston. We want them to come out here and enjoy what what Montgomery County and what Conroe has to offer. And that's why we're here. It's really difficult to choose the locations. Of course, Bartlett's being the, the only one. whiskey, my <laughs> my favorite whiskey. Um, that wasn't easy, but yeah, the quality of everybody in Montgomery County, when I say it's a, a Montgomery County tour, like across the board, it's it's very good stuff. So the, um, the venues that you have as part of this, do you know them all offhand? Mm-hmm. Are you ready? What are they? Yes. Bartlett's, Southern Star, The Firm Meadery, Blue Epiphany, B-52, H Wines, you'll love those guys, the French guys, um, Whitley Vineyards, and Frankenbolts. Yes, and we'll hear about Frankenbolts shortly, but you are unique, and so what do you sell the most of? Um, In terms of whole bottles, the most of what we sell is the spice drum and the single malt whiskey. In terms of drinks, we make a painkiller that everybody absolutely (laughs) loves that we set on fire, and uh, whiskey old fashions. So what are you serving for part of the Bears, et cetera, so bear, bear crawl? So, the, so for the bear crawl, you'll get two half-ounce pours, so two half-ounces of any of the six spirits that you choose. If you're a whiskey person, you can get both whiskeys. If you're a rum person, you get two of the rums. If you want to try two different things, we can get to do a whiskey and a rum. So they just, you. you're serving like a shot glass of it? Yes, ma'am. It would be, okay. be a half of a shot. Okay. So and I recommend everyone getting an old-fashioned before they leave. And then you sell the bottles there. Do you distribute them anyplace else besides your Yes, place? ma'am. We have our spirits in all 12 total wines around Houston. We have our spirits in a number of the um, spec stores here in Montgomery County, plus uh, Premier Beverage out on 105 near the lake, and Grand Liquor in um, on Wood Forest, and SN Liquor in the Woodlands. So kind of spreading out. Yes, ma'am. That's awesome. So do you have other people that work with you now? Yes, I have a wonderful assistant, uh, Michaela Harris. Uh, she's my she's my bartender. My first actual full my a- first That's actual exciting. not full time, but my first actual W two employee. Yay! Uh, and her husband Brent Harris. Uh, he does uh, outside sales for us as a consultant. So I have two people that help me out on a lot of this stuff. That's great. Yeah, yeah you needed that because yes. otherwise you were kind of all over. But yeah. you had to do it to, to grow, right? Mm-hmm. And increase the branding and awareness, yeah. all that. And between my day job and the distillery, I'm working, you know, 75, 80 hours a week. So it's a lot. It is a lot. But you have to put in the work to make make it happen, right? Well, yes, exactly. That's true. I, I totally understand that. So let's talk a little bit about this. So this is Memorial Weekend. 
And I know that that's a no refusal weekend, but you have some things in place for yes. the drinking. Tell me about that. Um, so we have partnered with Texas Brewery Tours. They have offered um, their buses. Um, they can take up to 28 people. So once they sell 28 tickets, um, that's it. Um, but they'll leave the Fairfield Inn and Suites um, Saturday, and they will take at noon and take you around the Conroe area. Um, breweries and wineries and then and distillery um, and you'll see that there are uh, two stickers on their buses one for Bartlett's and one for um, Southern Star on their buses um, and then Saturday starting from the same place they'll take you to Montgomery on that side of the tour so we're very excited for that so um, they do need 14 tickets sold by next Wednesday to run these routes so it's important to get your um, tickets for that now you can get it on their website so if you go to texas um, brewery tours tx brew tours um, dot com uh, they will and get your tickets um before wednesday to reserve your spot after that you won't necessarily be able to if we don't sell enough so, so maybe then you could put it on your website too or yeah your facebook page to make it easier so they can get their tickets for the bear crawl and their tickets for the um the tour bus yeah at the same place yeah and also we've partnered with fairfield inn and suites they're on 45 um where they are leaving yeah. from they have um set aside rooms for the bear crawl again you have to get your tickets before next wednesday um, in order to reserve your room. They're giving you weekday prices for Memorial Day weekend, you guys. Like, that's just crazy. <laughs> I mean, that, that's just an amazing partner right there um, that you can get your overnight stay there on a holiday weekend for $89. And you don't have to drive back to the Woodlands, drive back to Houston or whatever. Or drive to, it all. Or while drive you're it drinking, all. You know? Yeah, yeah, drive it all um, for Sunday's part of the tour. You know, mm -hmm. so it's just a great partnership. And Texas Brewery Tours, um, for the first bus filled, they're giving us 10% of all of the sales. Um, for the second bus filled, they're giving us 15%. So what an amazing community we live in when they're willing to give back. Because um, that's part of this, too, is our breweries, distilleries, and wineries were some of the hardest hit last year. So I'm excited to help promote them as a part of our you know, fundraiser and same with the buses. His buses were shut down for so long and the Fairfield Inn and Suites is a part of the community and they were shut down for how long? So I'm excited to be promoting and partnering with these people this year. Everybody needs the business. Yes. Everybody needs it. So it's only fifty dollars to go to all these venues. Yes. Eight venues. Eight venues. Eight venues. Okay. Split between Conroe and Montgomery. I'm not suggesting you do them all on the same day. I no, I would just, not recommend no. that. That's just way too much. I think I could handle two. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. So, uh, yeah. So, it's a good thing. And it goes to help um, get a place, get a, get a sanctuary for it. For you and uh, of course you you can take a donation too right they don't, oh yeah they don't have to drink they no. can no. just make a donation or you can come volunteer we're still yes. looking for volunteers to work our booths um, so there is that opportunity as well it's a three-hour shift on Saturday or Sunday um, or just a one-hour shift to come help set up or tear down um, so there is opportunities there too, but yes, donations are always wonderful. It goes directly into our capital campaign to purchase 20 acres in Montgomery County. Um, so 20 acres to start the nation's first bear sanctuary focused on bears out of the exotic pet trade. Well, we're going to take a little break and uh, then we'll be right back to hear a little bit more about the bear crawl, more about Bartlett's distillery. And then we'll, um, Welcome Mo Monique Crawford from Frankenbolt's Brewing Company. Yes. We'll be right back. Since 2004, Roger Stein Chiropractic has offered spine and joint manipulation services to residents of Montgomery County and surrounding areas. Conditions treated include lower back pain, migraines, headaches, whiplash, carpal tunnel, neck pain, sciatica, joint pain, sports injuries, herniated discs, and complications from pregnancy. Roger Stein Chiropractic, led by Dr. Stacy Rogers and Dr. Brian McGee, is an integrity-verified chiropractic clinic. 
Call 936-441-9990 for an appointment or visit rogerssteinchiropractic.com. That's R-O-D-G-E-R-S-S-T-E-I-N, chiropractic.com. Team Sinisi is a proud sponsor of Conroe Culture News. Vinny Sinisi and his professional team provide comprehensive real estate services throughout the greater Montgomery County area and beyond. Whether looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, Team Sinisi has an impeccable reputation. Contact Team Sinisi for a great experience at teamsinisi.com. That's T-E-A-M-S-I-N-I-S-I.com. Hello, we are back. This is Margie Taylor. I'm the host for Conroe Culture News, and we are talking with Katie Krauss about bears, etc., and the bear crawl, which is happening Memorial Weekend, Saturday and Sunday, May 29th and uh, May 30th, in uh, both Montgomery and Conroe. She has wineries, the one distillery, Van was sharing information about Bartlett's Distillery, and then we have a number of vineyards, and we have uh, Whitley Vineyards, Blue Epiphany, the Firm Meadery, and then we have the Brewery, Southern Star, Frank and Bolts Brewing Company, B52. Oh, and I forgot H Wines. H Wines, H -Wines <laughs> is a winery, yes. So um, now sitting with us, I have uh, Monique Crawford. She's the Vice President of Public Relations of frank and bolts brewing company so monique i first got to ask you why all the z's what is that about <laughs> so all the z's represent lightning bolts um our head brewer and um, the partner that we have with frank and bolts is a young frankenstein mel brooks fanatic and so there's the tie into the franken uh, bolts plus the, all the Z's. And there's four of us that are partners, so we just tag that on as well. Okay, well that makes you very unique. Extremely. And memorable. <laughs> Extremely. Right? Okay, mm -hmm. so Frank and Bolt's Brewing Company, which is spelled T-Z-Z-Z-Z, -Z -Z -Z, <laughs> by the way. It's pretty easy to find if you Google it on Facebook or find their uh, website. When did you open? So we opened March 27th of 2021. So we are a little bit of baby babies here we're two you months are. two months into this exciting journey of a brew pub and why that location so the location um when we reflect back actually found us because um my husband's partner and his wife they were driving in the area and had been seeking and scouting out places and happened to be caught at the light right there at 105 and FM 1486 and saw the for rent sign and were drawn in um, to inquire a little bit more. Uh, it feels like the location was tailor-made for our oh, needs. Well, I like that. <laughs> Definitely tailor-made for our needs. The infrastructure was um, there. We, put, we were just able to put our little personal touch to it. And so Frankenbolts was born from there. Um, Chuck Coleman and Michelle Coleman are our partners. And my husband, Johnny J.C. Crawford, for those who have come in, already know him as J.C. Um, they approached us about an opportunity to become partners and invest in this wild journey of breweries. And um, we said yes. And from the day we said yes, we opened four months later. Wow. Exciting, isn't it? <laughs> it has been. Um, there's been a lot of grit um, as well as a lot of opportunities to pivot when necessary regarding this journey. But my husband and I, we definitely have an entrepreneurial spirit. And Chuck has been brewing for over 20 years. And so we've been able to um, leverage and kind of merge these two families together into what now the public knows as Frankenbolt's Brewing Company. So how are you getting your name out there? Besides this radio show, of course. <laughs> so um, I am the voice and face behind all of the postings. And um, so I um, have 
learned a whole lot about Facebook and Instagram, and we were in the community impact, um, a lot of word of mouth. We have been truly supported thus far by the community, the local community in the area, as well as friends and family. So everything that you see within the establishment, friends and family have had their hands in helping us to ensure that we were able to open on that on the 27th. And Katie, how did you find out about them? I saw their grand opening on Facebook, and I was just like, oh, my gosh, look at this place. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, I had never heard of it until you started sharing, but hopefully this will get you more attention as well, being part of the Bear Crawl. Yes. So tell me uh, what kind of beer you serve and sure. what makes it different from the other breweries. What makes it unique? So, um our style of brewing is English and British mix of it. So we use the hops for flavoring, not necessarily for the bitterness. And one of the other things that make a, we're a small system, small batch. So every time you come in, it's highly likely you're gonna get, be able to taste something new because of the fact that we, out of our 16 taps, we have eight of our own beers that we're brewing. So we do like to support local as well, but we also like to be able to put out a variety so you, we're positions where for those that are transitioning into the craft beer world, there's a little bit for them there as well to help them with that transition to make that leap into the craft, craft beer world. As well as for those that love the stouts, um, if you have not had a stormy night, you are missing out. Mm. Um, and so it is a milk chocolate pepper stout. And so don't let the pepper scare you. It's a nice, a smooth finish of pepper in the back of it but um our bre head brewer chuck he's known for his porters and his stouts so it's definitely an experience i don't know that i'm going to get my husband to leave <laughs> <laughs> well i want to try it i mean it sounds fabulous it really does and you sound so knowledgeable about the product as well well thank you i have um, fast tracked my life into um learning about beers and being able to talk about latte porters versus pale ales versus stouts versus ipas but what we really want to be known for we're a family friendly um, establishment pet friendly establishment and um, hopefully everyone that has come in has felt welcomed, and that's our goal. So what will you be serving during the bear crawl? So during the bear crawl, we've just tapped our West, um, West Coast wasteland. So for those that like the West Coast type of IPA, they'll get a, a little opportunity of that. Of, we will have Stormy Night as well and Eye Popper. Um, we'll definitely have YPW for those that have had that experience. And we are we like to be have a little fun with how we name the beers as well. So they'll be anchored in a little young Frankenstein, but they also will pique your curiosity. And we don't say what the initials mean until you come in and have the experience. <laughs> wow, very, very interesting. So, okay. Um, well, let's get back to the tour how do how do they get tickets and tell me a little bit more about that so you can go to our website www.bearsetc.org um, in the upper right hand corner you will see our little flyer it'll take you to the events page and you can either scan the qr code that's there on the flyer or you can click the link to our paypal to purchase uh your tickets um then uh, or you can go into any of the venues or anywhere around town that's hung our posters up and scan the QR code there. And you will be making an appearance at Verniel's New Orleans Bakery, yes? Yes, we will be there Saturday um, from 3 to 5.30. We have um, some artwork hung in there that is actually made by some of the animals that have been rescued from the exotic pet trade. So we do have a bear painting um, that he actually bit through the painting, so people are always amazed to see how big the hole is in the painting from his canine tooth. Uh, so come in, we'll tell you the stories and tell you why bears, etc., is needed so much. Um, there is no true sanctuary in the U.S. focused on bears from the exotic pet trade. So we are solving that problem for the United States. Well, that's a good thing. People didn't realize there was a problem until you came along. Right. Or the tigers just came along. <laughs> I, I don't know. So are there bears near us? Yes. So I just, you know, we talked earlier about um, 
the um oh gosh people that call me and stuff because I'm right, a part right, of the Texas right. Black Bear Alliance. They need you for different. So things. I received yeah. a Facebook message just last night. There's a bear print on somebody's sliding door in the Conroe area. No way. Yes way. And so we we're trying to find someone in that area that has game cams up that may have snatched a photo or a video of that bear um so there is a confirmed bear um over in Koontz that we have on a game cam and then we have seen scat and prince so it doesn't necessarily confirm that the bear is here it may have just been traveling through but um, as a part of Texas Black Bear Alliance, we are helping Texas Parks and Wildlife monitor where these bears are. And so because I'm so involved in the community, I do get a lot of those Facebook messages and phone calls and text messages. Um, there's also another possibly caught on a um, night vision camera by someone over in Dobbin. <laughs> okay but it's on Monique, like 300 I, acres i browse that <laughs> <laughs> um and so we are just working to confirm those sightings bears are a native species to texas um black bears specifically the, go clear down into central Mes mexico and up into canada and cover the entire united states so there is a resident population of bears of 50 bears over in Big Bend. And then slowly in East Texas, the bears are moving back in from Louisiana, Arkansas, and Oklahoma, with most of the sightings being Northeast Texas. Okay, so if there was a bear that came inside here, what, <laughs> open the door, what do you do? Um, you're going to continue to face it. Don't turn around and run. Um, that's a part of our bear awareness program that we put out. Um, you're going to walk back slowly. You're going to talk to it softly. Um, you're going to make yourself maybe look big. Um, if you have a sweater or something, pull it up, make it look big. Just slowly walk away. And we tell people to use the rule of thumb when you're in bear country. So once you reach a distance that your thumb can cover the bear, then you're usually a safe distance away. Now, if it's mom with cubs, you need to give them a little more space, right? Um, but once you're that far away, generally you can turn around and walk away. Don't ever run away. Um, the other important thing is, you know, don't leave food out to attract it to come in. So the gal who contacted me over Facebook last night, I said, pull in any hummingbird feeders, pull in any cat food you have outside, pull in any grills, garbage cans, anything like that that's going to attract that bear to come up into your backyard. Um, and so I suggest that for anybody, just in general, it prevents raccoons and opossums and all kinds of wildlife that can bring things into your backyard. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Are you ready, Monique? <laughs> Note to self. <laughs> Note to self. We, we pull in all the garbage cans each night. <laughs> okay, good. Um, Very but good. yeah, you don't, bears are pretty opportunistic feeders and they can smell food a mile away. So if you're pulling all that stuff in and cleaning up after yourself, not leaving trash on the trails and the national forest and things of that nature that they get a taste for, um, then they're pretty much going to stick to themselves. So are they in the national forest? Perhaps. I, would, I can't say I can, can confirm that they are, um, but... It's possible. It's possible. It's definitely possible. Okay. So I'm excited to try your brews. Yes, we're, we're looking forward to have you stopping by, definitely. Yes, you need to have a big event there. You need to have a big ribbon cutting. Yes, we, we actually, um, I've actually just spoke with the Montgomery Chamber earlier today. So we are looking to go ahead and get it scheduled um, to get our ribbon cutting. We were in a um, push to go ahead and get started. And so our grand opening was fabulous. We had over 300 wow. um Family, friends, and locals go ahead and support us. We're open Wednesday through Sunday, and so um, we are excited to do a ribbon cutting ceremony in the very near future, as well as participate in other of the chamber events, upcoming events. So how did you and your husband get into this, though? I understand you have a brewmaster. I get that part, but how about y'all? 
So my husband, a.k.a. JC, has a great palate, uh, a very refined great palate, and has cellared over 100 beers. So um, Chuck and my husband became friends, and because of that friendship, it brought us down this journey where my husband would taste what Chuck is brewing and give him feedback on that and um, this partnership of uh, great wives, Michelle and myself supporting their, uh, what we call their Ferrari moment was opening a brewery instead of purchasing a Ferrari. Um, so <laughs> from that, um, this um, journey has begun. And so it's re- been very exciting. We've been able to get the kids involved with helping and supporting. So you'll see our children there. You'll see the Coleman children there as well. And some of our other friends and families have just pitched in to make sure that we keep it going and that it's a success. Well, that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. That's wonderful. So what I really like is that Katie has brought in all these local local venues to come mm-hmm. in. I mean, they're all local. Every single you know, one of them. The winery, the distillery, the breweries. Southern Star has been around, I want to say 13 years or so, something like that. And they have increased um, their venue where they operate out of when they used to be over by um, the convention center in 3083. I think they moved about four years ago or so into their current location. And the uh, Mead Winery, the firm, is brand new. In yeah, they just Conroe. opened shortly before you did, mm-hmm. just so like two months ago. You have Blue Epiphany on here, yes. right? Is this the downtown location? Or no, the, it'll be the out at their winery. Okay, so that one's out at the winery. I just wanted to make sure on that. Yes. And uh, it. It sounds fabulous. So it's only $50 uh, to do all eight of these venues. And again, I would definitely split it up. Yes. And it's <laughs> noon to six, Saturday and Sunday. Conroe one day, Montgomery the other. You know, uh, get a designated driver. Yes. Or contact the uh, tour bus, TexasBrewTours.com. Stay a night for a great rate, $89 a night at the Fairfield uh, in and at Marriott yeah, yeah in Conroe and uh, have a good time um, and remember why we are celebrating Memorial Day weekend yes. yes so go out on Monday to the Montgomery County Veterans Memorial Park at I-45 and Highway 105 105 um, and it's now One Freedom Road is what they're calling it and uh, listen to um, the ceremony. Be be a part of that. Sober, hopefully. Yes. <laughs> responsibly. And, and responsibly. That's why it's tasting. On Monday, after all the tastings are done. And you've slept a little bit. Yeah. So anything else you want to add, Katie? No, just remember that um, every ticket purchased, um, the proceeds go into our capital campaign to rescue some of the 1,000 bears in current need of placement. Or anything else that people come up with or yeah i mean i got a phone call for a serval that was tied in a backyard in northeast texas last sunday after getting off the plane so it just it it never ends like the same night as that tiger um the exotic pet trade is in constant flow of animals in need of help so real quick (laughs) tell me about your friend who did the tiger show um, the true friend or the not true friend? The not true friend. The not true friend, Joe Exotic. Um, I have death threats from him back in 2011 when I started speaking out against him. And then Carol Baskin is my friend. Okay. She's the true friend. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So is she on that alliance with you? Yes. Very yep. good. So bears, et cetera, dot org. Or the Facebook page. Yes. Or if you know Katie, page. just text her. I mean, yeah, it's all <laughs> over my page, all over, you know. Um, so, yeah, there is an event page on Facebook as well. Um, post pictures there. Hashtag Bear Crawl 2021. Um, and show your support oh, for all of our And locals. the presenting sponsor. Oh, it's Office Evolution. Office Evolution, the place where you go to office, right? Oh, my gosh. It's a shared office space. How can we forget them? They're well, we amazing. Didn't. We got him in there. Gotcha. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Phil Anderson mm-hmm. and yep. Roger. And Tina office at e- Office yes, Evolution. Yes, Office Evolution. Yes, they're amazing co-work space. <laughs> um they have offices. They have just mailboxes if you just need a location for a mailbox. Um, they have day offices. They have offices by the hour. Um, 
they can do whatever you need. It kind of sounds and weird. Conference offices rooms. by the hour. <laughs> yeah, offices. You know, you can have a meeting room, a conference room. You can have room. a conference room, um, and they have full Wi-Fi. I mean, it's just an amazing place to office. I love it there. Okay. Well, we appreciate our sponsors for this, Roger Stein Chiropractic and Team Sinisi. And uh, we hope to see you all this coming weekend, Memorial Day weekend. Have, have fun and be safe.